last week in the PartyPoker.net European Open. It was two champions at the end. EPT winner Roland DeWolf taking on the flying Finn. Yanni Hellraiser Sointula. And Yanni raised Kane and Abel on his way to victory. We've got lots more coming up for you as someone gambles to win $125,000. Shuffle up and welcome to the PartyPoker.net European Open. I'm Jesse May, joined by comedian and avid poker player Norman Pace. Now, Norman, you've become a big fan of, of poker. What, what, what do you like about the game? Uh, I think it's the uh, most fun you can have with your trousers on, Jesse. You, know, <laughs> you, you sit there and you can feel things happening inside your body that you've forgotten about since you were an adolescent, really. Did you, uh, did you play mostly, or do you play mostly on the internet or live? Yeah, I think physical constraints mean that most people nowadays do. Uh, but as a matter of fact, my wife plays more than I do, and I tend to watch her. Uh, she's become quite good. She's had some very good results. But you played once on television before. When you got down there, uh, how did it feel to be in that live setting? You know, I've been on television quite a few times over the years, and you're always... Um, sort of very conscious of a camera pointing at you, but when you play poker on the telly, after half an hour you forget completely you're on the TV because the game consumes your thoughts so much that I, I felt quite relaxed after the first well, half an hour. Let, let's talk a little bit about tells. Now, mm -hmm. tells are, are call, you know, things you can pick up from other people, maybe uh, in addition to the cards, you know if they're bluffing or they're not bluffing. Do you, did, did you pick that stuff up when you were playing? Um, I tried to. I, somebody told me once, a pro told me once, that uh, when people are looking at their cards, don't look at yours, but look at the people who are looking at the cards, the other players at the table. And particularly when the flop comes down, if your head's up against somebody, watch them and their reaction to the flop, rather than looking at the flop yourself and being too concerned whether you've hit it. One person who knows a lot about tells, he says he can see into the other players' souls, is former world champion Phil Helmuth. So, you want to improve your reading abilities? Do you want to know when they're weak? Then you have to trust your instincts. It's all about instincts. There are certain tells that you can use. For example, the steeple. Almost every time someone does the steeple without moving their mouth, they have the hand. If they're trying to do the fake steeple, then in general they'll go, that means they're weak. But the steeple is a strong indicator that they have a strong hand. How do you tell when they're bluffing? Look for things that they wouldn't normally do. If you can see the person's eyes, if their eyes start to expand, they have the hand. If they constrict, they don't have the hand. That's how you can tell if a card hits someone. If you don't have access to their eyes, watch whether they lean backwards or forwards after the flop. If they lean forwards, it usually means that they hit the flop and they're engaged. If they lean backwards, it usually means that they've missed the flop and they're getting ready to you know, whatever. They haven't made their mind up exactly what they're going to do, but it usually means that they've missed. There's all kinds of little physical things that you can learn about people. Watch someone during a hand when you're pretty sure that they have it and watch the way that they act. In other words, you know for some reason that they have it. Watch all of their motions and remember those motions. Do the same thing when you don't think they have the hand. Watch all of their motions. Learn to trust your instincts. Wise words from Phil Helmuth, who's an advocate of the statue and the tank. When he goes into the shell, he says he never moves a muscle. Mm, I've watched him and he doesn't, but lots of players do, don't they? Lots of players kind of fidget in their seat. Or The one that gets me is when somebody puts their chips into the middle in a really strong bet, what do you think? Are they strong or are they weak? I mean, Mike Caro, obviously, the, the, he's called the father of tells, wrote the book of tells, and he says strong means weak. So if someone is trying to gain notice by putting their chips in strong, then that means that they've, they're bluffing. And uh, on the other side of the coin, if someone is trying to not gain notice, to be inconspicuous, to hide from their opponents while they put their chips in, that would be the sign of a strong hand. But there's false tells, aren't there? Well, there are. You know, it always worries me. You think you've got to tell on somebody. You've been sitting at a table for four hours. You think, oh, yeah, he's strong. And so you put your chips in and you lose. So I think there's a double-edged sword to tell. And I mean, one of the things the internet has shown is that there is a huge technical side to the game and that maybe betting patterns are the biggest tell of them all. Yeah, I, I also think, I would say, Jesse, that it's best to watch your opponents watching the cards rather than looking at your own cards. That's probably a good way to find out if they're strong or weak. So pay attention, but don't jump over the cliff too soon. Anyway, the players tonight will be hoping to pick up signs from their opponents while not giving off any aura of their own. Let's see who's in the seats tonight and where they'll be dealt.
sweaty lineup. Norman, what do you think is going to win the day? Survival or aggression? Controlled aggression. Sit there in the early rounds, get aggressive later on. The person who wins this will not be passive, Jesse. Well, it's all to be played for. Join us after the break at the PartyPoker.net European Open. Just about ready for the fish fry. Myself and Norman Pace will be guiding you through, so let's get over to the table where some titans will try to terrorize. Players beginning with 100,000 in tournament chips. Red, blue, and yellow. And uh, the blinds are going to be starting here at 1 in 2,000. So Robert Cooper, Jack 10 suited under the gun. Yeah, Race, no, normally want to see a flop total. with that. But Robert's raising. 2 plus 3 is 5. And uh, Joe's got the same kind of hand. Yeah, Joe looks like he's cool. going to call that, yeah. <coughs> they don't call him Chicken Joe because he's scared. Pass. He does, likes to see a lot of flops and he can stand a Pass. lot of pressure. Cam Broad sitting with 10-7 uh, suited there. Some players would play that, though, wouldn't they, in this position? I think he probably could have stood to see a flop. He may, uh, may have decided he does not want to get involved before he has a read on the other players. And Bob Cooper giving Chicken Joe the hard stare down before the flop. If the case 10 hits. Uh, Robert Cooper hits top tear on the flop there, and he's going to bet out. 5,000. 5,000 bet. Cool. Oh. And Joe's got an up and down straight draw. Seven or queen would hit him nicely. So there could be some fireworks here, especially if the seven comes. Yeah, it might slow, it might slow uh, his opponent down a bit there, don't you think? Oh, no, it's a blank. 5,000? Rob just kind of tickling this pot. There's 23,000 in there. He's only bet 5,000. And oh. uh, it seems like Joe's just happy to uh, to just see the, the river without raising. Yeah, Robert's still a big favorite in this hand. Oh. Okay. <laughs> 10,000. Uh, Robert's going to call Four it. He won't like it. No, he's not. Did very well to check on the river there. It's uh, got a good spidey sense there, Robert Cooper. <coughs> but uh, no prize for that because the pot going to Chicken Joe Kuami. I think in America, don't they call it sucking out or something like that, Jesse? Yeah, they do. There's a lot of names for it. But all of them <laughs> will have Robert Cooper slamming his chips down. <laughs> 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 Let's check out the ranking of hands. Each five-card poker hand falls into the official ranking of poker hands. Bottom of the ladder is high card only. A pair just above that, and two pair is higher still. Three of a kind is three of a number, a straight. Five cards in a row of any suit. A flush is five cards of the same suit in any order. Full house, three of a kind plus a pair. Four of a kind is self-explanatory, and a straight flush is five cards all in a row of the same suit suit. Royal flush is top of the pops. That's a straight flush. Ace high. Pull. Pull. Well, Chicken Joe has limped in here and he's got this pot going. Could it be a multi-way yes. pot here? King yes. four, ace seven. Now around to the blinds. Four. No and, uh, four way. Robert Cooper's getting into pots, but he's not getting out of them with any chips, unfortunately. A big flop for Joe. Flush draw and a straight draw, but look what Andy Pyra's got. In fact, it's, it's Andy Pyra and, Check. Check. and Dave Gregory both have the nut straight. Oh, we're going to see some chips go in here. <laughs> we're going to see them all go in. We are. Well, we should, but... A lot of players will slow play now, weren't they? And out slow play each other. I've seen it happen so many times. It'd be amazing to see if Chicken Joe's doing all the betting here. And he's got third best. Yeah, but one more diamond and he's going to take their money, isn't he? 15,000 more, 22 total, guys. Well, what are you thinking if you're Andy Pyra? It's been betting a raise to you. And Andy's got the nuts here. There's no way he can put Dave Gregory on the same hand. Well, if Andy's going to come out of himself, he's going to shove them all in here and now. He might win the pot. 50 to go. 
Oh, he's, he's just he made raised. a raise. Well done, Andy. Times. Good. Poor Joe Kawami. <laughs> he's sitting there. He thinks he's got a huge draw. As it turns out, that four means nothing for Is Kawami. It? The three or the eight would not give him the, the best hand. I think he's just about getting the odds to call, though, isn't he? The pot odds to call this. There's 89,000 in the pot and 27 needed. So he's getting two and a half, three to one. He may call. Yeah, it's just a good point. He, he may just want to go for it. He may stick all his chips in. And uh, Joe has no way of knowing what Dave Gregory is going to do behind him. But uh, I have a pretty good idea. Yes, I think we do. But then again, we can see the cards. They can't. <coughs> Master of stating the obvious, Jesse. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough spot for Joe. I mean, it's pretty much the, he's being asked a question right now. Like you said, he's getting the right odds, but he's being asked a question: Does he want to put all his tournament on the line here? Yeah. He's reaching deep to those chips, but he's not sure. He can't possibly put them both on a straight. He can't think they both flopped a straight. What's he thinking? Trips? Do you, do you think he might be wondering about whether or not the ace flush is out there? That's a very good point. We can tell you, Joe. It's <laughs> it <would> not. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it would be the biggest <laughs> laydown he's ever made. He's seriously considering it. I don't blame him. Oh, they haven't changed. Joe, it's still King 4 suited diamonds. You still have a flush draw. Look at Andy Pyra. Oh, he's, oh, he is he's going all in. in. And Andy Pyra. Oh. oh. <laughs> he does. And here comes Dave Gregory. A call from Dave. What's Andy Dave. gonna do? Well, he can't fold. He's got the nuts. But does he know it's the nuts? I mean, his heart will be going, and his stomach will be churning now. Well, I, I, and Andy sure. must think he's up against cool. a set and a flush draw or something. Every, uh, they're all in. This, this is, is a, it's a huge pot, and uh, Pyra actually not all in, but only by about ten thousand because he had more chips. This pot over three hundred grand. And uh, now we know that if the flush doesn't come, Pyra and Gregory will split it up. Well, Gregory and Pyra would be pleased to split it up right now. The man on the line is Joe Kumi, one diamond, and he is way our chip leader. He'll do nearly a double knockout. Here's the turn. That's changed nothing. There are about eight diamonds in the deck for Joe Kuami. To be or not to be, no. And with that eight, Joe Kwame made a straight, but uh, it's not good enough. Eight high straight, beat out in Chicken Joe. Out as quick as he went in. He he had a he had a great chance to win uh, half the chips on the table right there. Well, he thought for a long time about his decision, Jesse, didn't he? In the end, he felt the only move was to move over the top all in and try to win the pot there and then. As it was, he didn't know he was up against two people with nuts. So, big action, and it's Andy Pyra now with 185,000 in chips. Dave Gregory on the nut straight himself, moving up, and uh, poor chicken Joe Kawami. He's only got about one bet left. I'll tell you what. If he comes back from this, we'll have to change his nickname from Chicken to Lazarus, that's for sure. <laughs> that was the first pot that Garbats had won in the middle of all that melee. He'll be pleased. He was, um, when I spoke to him earlier, he was a little bit nervous about his first TV appearance, but he's making, he, he's trying to look like an extra in lock, stock, and two smoking Pass. barrels. Right. <laughs> Six. Which is the right way to play poker, I think. I think so. I mean, if table image is anything, intimidation has to be a good thing. Re-race. <laughs> Andy Pyra's sitting there with uh, all in. King all Queen in. of Diamonds. And uh, he'll be confident seven, after his last big win. Yeah, I mean, Joe's going to be delighted to find out he's got the only ace out there so far. Out and and they're both suited in diamonds, so if a flush oh, comes down, Joe will take it. No, no, no. Sorry. There'll Pass. still okay. be action on Ken Broad. Does he want to play this as well? Oh, he has. Not the original range. Still betting on the side, gentlemen. Twenty-five thousand in there, and that is what Joe Kawami has a chance to win. 
Yeah, you know, and Andy and uh, and Ken may check this down to try and get rid of him because, I mean, one of the things you want to do is get rid of opponents, not necessarily bet out at pots yourself and uh, and win them there and then. And two people playing against an all-in person has got more chance of winning. Check. Interesting to see if they do. Check. They, check. There is a saying, don't bet into a dry <laughs> side pot, and there's... But um, right now, Pyra has the best hand. Here's the turn. And uh, actually, if this hand holds up, then Chicken Joe has got the best check. hand. Anything but a king, Ten queen, thousand. or jack. And this That's is the kind of thing. thing. Now, if a jack That's comes on the river, the Ken Broad is going to get <laughs> is going to get very ratchety. <laughs> but uh, I think Andy might have thought he was best with the king queen anyway. Yeah. As it turns out, he's not. Joe's got him beat. Nuts. The cruelest of cards is the river card. Thank you. Will it be cruel to Joe today? Yeah. yeah. Oh. He deserves a bit of a break. I think so. After missing his flush. And he's got one, two tens and two deuces with the ace, winning this main pot. And uh, at 23,000, Joe Kuami will have to feel like he's got a fortune. Yeah, he tripled through there, had two calls, and he managed to hold up. Nobody hit anything on the board at all. He must be very pleased now. I, I always do that, actually. I let people take the blinds early on so that later when I re-raise, they think I'm going to be really strong. I mean, in, in, in these heats, it, it really has to be a great strategy because uh, it can just uh, you can get one free pass there with a re-raise. Cool. Well, Andy Pyra's calling with the uh, ace-queen, hoping to hit a flop and slow play, I think. Pass. Yeah, the bet Careful. was eight thousand by Dave, and uh, he must be he must be well aware that his Jack Ten is not good at this juncture. But flop to come. Just shows how conservative Andy's being by not re-raising with Ace Queen. Most players would, I think, but seeing that flop, he'd be glad he didn't, Jesse. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what kind of escape tactics he 7, has. Thousand. He's betting out at it. Nice. Raise. Well, if Andy was asking a question, he is getting the answer here. 20,000 more, 27 total. Andy's going to fold this, I think. The way he's been playing so far, he's he's not going to risk any more chips. He's missed the flop. Dave Gregory's shown him strength, and I think Andy's going to throw this away. But, of course... Pass. You kind of like the way Andy played that, actually. I mean, uh, you know, if, if he had checked and Dave Gregory had bet on the flop, he wouldn't have known anything, would he? That's right. That's right. I, I think you have to find out where you are. Yeah. A lot of players are shy of betting a flop that they've missed, but uh, if you do, you soon find out if your opponents uh, hit the flop. I'll be glad. You won't be allowed out <laughs> no. to get your ready. No, he, he, can, he can give it to my mate. He'll, he'll bring it in. Jeff. Here's Kuami with ace-10. He, he might decide that's enough. Oh, Jesse, they're going in. Look at the man's eyes. <laughs> Slightly furrowed brow, trying to pretend he has nothing. <laughs> He's humming. That's a sure sign. The chips are going in the middle. He might be wondering if he has enough to raise and still get away from the hand. He's got about 26,000. No, he's come here to win, oh, no. Jesse. They're all in. Will he get a call? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. All in for 26,000. I'm all out. Oh. 26,000 is enough to hurt one or two of them. Oh, Dave Garbass has got the hooks. A dangerous hand. You want to be raising with that hand, not calling, wouldn't you say? Oh. Call. He's calling. He is. Yeah, you'd think he oh. might be interested oh. in clearing the field behind him. But uh, as it is, everyone else out, and it is Joe Kuami all in. And Dave's going to be pleased. There's only one overcard to his jacks. Joe's percentage chances of winning this if he had ace queen will be considerably higher. As it is now, he needs to see an ace or a really jammy flop. <laughs> jammy would be the right <laughs> word. <laughs> but uh, any bullet will do for Kuami here. And uh, that's no good. He needs two for a straight to win it. He's going to need a seven and a six. 
little bit. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that has made this a very tough story. Three aces in the deck. I think one of them may have been laid down already. So Joe drawing with a thin skin. Oh. <laughs> And it's a full house on the okay, board, but because Dave Garbus has a pair of jacks and they're higher than the nines, he takes it down and our first, our first casualty at the table is Joe Kumi. Hard luck, Joe. Uh, Joe Kuami's last hand, he moved with the ace-10 only to find Garbots, the hooks behind him. And the board caught up to a full house, but Garbots's was bigger. Eights full of jacks, beating eights full of nines. Now, Andy Pyra's obviously thinking, if I stack my chips up as high as possible, <laughs> they'll all be scared of me. Hold. He's got two big skyscrapers Place. there. And he's our second chip leader with 140,000. But he's trying to make it look as though it's even more than that. This may be the collision we were talking about. Garbots might try and overplay these fours and decide that the re-raise is the option. Cool. Cool. He's just calling. That's what I know. Hold. <laughs> well, a lot Hold. of players want to see a flop with a low pair, don't they? Because they're looking for trips, really. And he didn't want to expend too many chips in the hunt for trips. As it turns out, Dave Gregory has got quite a good hand, though. No more. Will he represent the ace here? Check. No, he checks. 15,000. Oh, Dave Garbutz reaches the 15,000. Is that going to be enough to get rid of Gregory? I guess his only option really is to re-raise if he's serious about taking the pot down, but he must be scared of the ace. It's the one card I didn't want to see. Pass. Hold. Well, he was actually honest. He told the truth. And he's learned a new four-letter word, Jesse. <laughs> the yeah. word fold. That was a great, uh, great bet by Dave Garbots, who uh, seized on the weakness that Dave Gregory showed. But uh, I think Dave Gregory actually—he's been raising so many pots. He—he uh, he just felt like there was no way to bluff that he had to make a hand to bet, and uh, it may have been right. Do you think um, position becomes less important in a short-handed game than in a ring game? I mean, when you have only five players, where a raise is likely to get through quite often, does it become less important than if there are ten players in the uh, at the table? Well, I think certainly when the blinds get big, the, the raises are going to be so big that there is going to be no position because <laughs> there's going to be no betting after the flop. But oh. uh, at this stage, at, at, and during that hand, position was very important, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. If Gregory had been second to act, he probably would have won that pot. Oh. And Broad's woken up with ace five. Raise. Raise. No hesitation in raising with ace five. Two left in the pot, Robert Cooper. Eight six suited. He's already got some chips invented in the pot. Maybe Ten more. you'll call. Fourteen total. He's got his sniffer over the table. He suspects theory, I think. Four. Mm -hmm. Doesn't want to act on it. Uh, Andy Pyra, I'll bet you my mortgage he mm. folds. <laughs> Oh, please, Andy Fold. Oh. Andy shows. 6 2. You have to make his way. I that still have a house, good. Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> so Ken Broad gets it through, and Ken Broad is a player who has won a high percentage of pots played, which uh, is always a good statistic, and that's why he doesn't have many more than he started with, but he does have more than he started with. He's been very, very solid today. I'm impressed with him. Martin's still my tip, actually, Ken. Team can. Team I think lens. Dave Gregory, <laughs> as <laughs> chip leader, has been the most forceful personality at the table and certainly not afraid to, to raise. But when he's come under pressure from a re-raise or a big bet, he's folded. So we'll see what he's made of. It'll be Garbats under the gun. Deadly Dave. Looking at his cards, all in black. Two black cards for the man in black. Oh. He's going nowhere with those under the gun. Ken Broad's uh, got Race. another ace, two aces in a <laughs> row. He likes those aces. Just deciding how much to raise here. Ten more. Fourteen total. Oh, he's run into one. Robert Cooper may re-raise here, I think. 
Vancouver's only got 70,000. The bet 14,000 right now. So, uh, I wonder if all in is the bet is the play. I think it's the play, but oh. he's not going to do that. He's calling. We noticed earlier when he picked up aces, he, he slow played those. If he misses the flop now. Oh. Well, this is going to be a real test on Ken Broad to see what happens if they both miss, isn't it? Uh, if it comes an ace, I think Ken is going to be in job. just a He's world of trouble. But they have both missed. They both missed. Battle of wills okay. now. <laughs> Robert <laughs> must. Okay. He must better this. He must. Go on, check, check. Turn card for free. A seven would make it a splitter. An eight is Ken's key card. Is Robert waiting for a queen or an ace? <laughs> he hasn't got one. Any bet will take this pot, Jesse. Take your courage in your hands. Did you do wonder? Rob, Bob Cooper has gotten very little information here. 15,000. Oh. Wow. He who hesitates is lost. And uh, Ken Broad, who may have been giving up on the pot on the flop, sees the horns back from Bob Cooper on the turn. Ken Broad, I, I think he thought his ace was good. Raise. Yes, a predictable raise with ace queen suited there for Dave Gregory. Ten thousand more, sixteen total. Pass. Not a huge raise though. Pass. Mm. We raise all in. Oh, well, Bob Cooper found the cards he was waiting for. He may even get action. Total. I think Pass. he will get action. I think mm -hmm. with ace ace queen okay, suited, he's going to get a call here. Dave Gregory has not put down many hands today. He's going to call this, I think question from Dave. How much oh, more sorry, is it to me? To well, Dave Gregory's got 143,000 chips in front of him, and this is going to cost him about a, just over a third of his stack to call. He's already got chips in the pot. He's going to oh. call. Yeah, it's really no decision. Ace-King is the only hand that he's in really bad shape against. And, and he is in bad shape. Yes. <laughs> he's about He'll be hoping for hearts, I think, Jesse. But it is Bob Cooper all in, and just needing to ban that queen from the board. Bob looks <coughs> like he's getting ready to go. Just put three diamonds on the flop. <laughs> Make it easy. <laughs> no, and they're all black. Yeah. No help there. <laughs> yeah. Anything but a queen, and Bob Cooper. <laughs> We'll be back in business. It's always the river, Bob. Just this once. <laughs> <laughs> he read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Oh no! Oh! oh. <laughs> His heart would be beating when he saw the paint there, Jesse. Yeah. But he doubles through. Bob Cooper's back. I'm Robert Cooper. I'm a capital investor from London. I've been playing poker for two years. It's anybody's game. It's about a bit of luck with the cards. If you get a few chips, then you can start pushing people around. But in the beginning, anything can happen. Just to let you know, um, the yellows are 1,000, the blues are 2,000, and those red ones are 5,000. Anyway, you stack it. <laughs> it is about 160, which is... Uh, you wonder how high. Well, judging by that camera shot, the director's Pass. actually listening to the commentary. That's a first, Jesse. <laughs> call. And this, just a call from the button. Dave Gregory, he may be feeling a bit beaten. He chose not to raise. Or just felt like his table image did not warrant a blind steal. But we're three-way here, 18,000. <laughs> also, it could be Gregory's just trying to make something happen playing for a big pot. It must affect you. He lost a 40,000 pot earlier. Maybe it's just slowing him down a little bit. 
Well, this is a flush draw for Dave Gregory. And Ken Broad has Check. two pair. Check. Is he trapping or is he afraid of a jack? 12,000. Well, he thinks we're not done with the pot yet. That's a good flop to bluff at, isn't it? When two, when a pair come down on the, on oh. the flop, <coughs> everybody's worried that you're betting the pair for trips. Will it get rid of uh, of Ken? He's actually got the real hand. He's looking very suspicious over at Dave Gregory. Well, Dave Gregory's banking on his flush draw. I mean, from Ken's point of view, this is the first time Dave Gregory Plus. limped in. And he's thrown it away. Did not want to get involved. Yeah, that was quite a scary bet, really. He must have been thinking Jack. There's always something in your mind in a situation like that. You assume your opponent has got the hand he's representing. Yeah. And it scares you off. But <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised that Kenny hasn't been scared of anything today. <laughs> and looking like that, why would he? Dickens. Dave Garbas on the button here. And there's the stack of Pyra. Pyra stack, the seventh wonder of the world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the tower of Pyra. <laughs> the leaning tower of Pyra. <laughs> I make a gag and you top it. What a great man you are. <laughs> Fold it to the button. Last round, Garbats executed a nice little button steal. Let's it go okay. this time. And uh, limp in. No race. Against no. the overcards, blind on blind. Ken Broad has really gotten the best of this matchup tonight. Head up pots against Bob Cooper. He's one from ahead and one from behind. And Bob Cooper has missed the flop again. So what's he going to do this time? Although he has uh, four to the flush, it's only a nine, and he must fear Six that five. his opponent has a five. higher spade than a nine, but he's not getting involved again. He's not. Ken Broad ha really has the psychological advantage here against his left and they say you can win a lot of chips from the blind on blind position ken broad has basically made a living tonight against robert cooper you see if one time robert cooper re-raised over the top ken broad has got to think he's got a, a monster hand because he's never done it <laughs> pyra the pile <laughs> He looks happy, though, doesn't oh, he? Oh, he's Victoria. having a blast. He's watched quite a lot of poker, and here he is now, <laughs> executing <laughs> in so, perfection. So I didn't realize it wasn't straight. So. Ah, he's picked up on the fact <laughs> that his, his pile is leaning. Pile. I mean, he, he, he's having fun, but, you know, these, these things always have a sad ending. <laughs> these, tall, these tall stacks of chips, either it falls over or you lose them all in a big pot. It's, it's, it's such a... It becomes... Uh, becomes uh, cool. Pass. Now, you see, that's a better way to stack the oh. chips Ken Broad there. He's got three piles instead of the two. And he given a free flop with the ace. It's the only ace out there. And it's the blinds against Dave Garbatz, who chose not to raise with his suited cons. He's made a flush draw here. And uh, this is one of those situations, if you asked for trouble, you got it. Bob Cooper allowed in with the queen five for free. And now he's got top pair. Andy Pyre has got an inside straight draw, but the odds on him making his three or an ace are relatively slim. But he's, yeah, looks like he might be having a look. Oh. The bet is only 6,000. Mm. Minimum bet. Cheap enough to get Garbatz interested for sure. Will he raise that? Oh. No, he just calls. A, a, a raise, a raise might have won it there. Hmm. I wonder. Dave looking for the club. Pyra, a three would be his key card. That's a great card for a queen. Six thousand. Raised. Oh, Six and Pyra re-raises. He's representing a two, Jesse. Y you know, I'm. This is very similar to what happened to Cooper in the very first hand against uh, Chicken Joe. Mm. It, it, 
didn't make a bet that was big enough to uh, to find out any information. I don't know. Andy seized on it. What is what is Garbots thinking about? Maybe he's wedded to his flush draw, yeah. and he's raised. No, <laughs> this is poker, Jesse. Thirty thousand total. He's gonna win it. He's gonna get both of them to fold. Well, Andy Pyre have fired a barrel, but I can't see him staying in here. But what Garbots has picked up on? It's Thirty. Yeah, eighteen to call. Eighteen to call. Has Andy picked up on something, or is he acting? His ace is good, as it turns out. Yeah. But uh, but he can't believe ace high is good. Well, it's 18,000 to call. There's about 80-something in the pot. But he's getting 7 to 1. And once again, Robert Cooper with two pair, with the yes. top pair on the board, has, has been made to fold by aggressive play. Not for the first time tonight. And as you say... Dave Garbats gets through that and picks up quite a good pot there. <laughs> it was amazing. I mean, <laughs> Cooper just put his head on the chopping block, and uh, Andy and Dave fell all over themselves to uh, grab the axe. Is it the bling or the rings? No, it's what's behind the eyes that count. Big brains and roll on poker. The cards are running spurious <coughs> here on the PartyPoker.com European Open. Pass. Win one, fold one, and oh Garbat's on the button. Um, He's, He's got money. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'm a Okay. <laughs> Ken Broad is playing yeah, Robert Cooper like a slot machine. <laughs> it's like it comes around to him. <laughs> Pull the handle and just take the pot. <laughs> I'll tell you what, what. What chance do you think? Bob needs to flop something here. No, I just wish I had a chat. Check. <laughs> check. Bike check. If you have an ace, Jesse, would you bet at that flop? <sighs> well, you'd, you'd, you'd think it was best, check. wouldn't you? Yeah. Right. It's not now. Got a queen? Yes, he has got a queen, but only we know that, queen. Robert. Okay. Check, check, check. <laughs> Bob asked him, and, and Ken didn't want to lie. He didn't. Mm -hmm. He's trying to let him catch up, but the check. seven won't do it. Ken's check. He's going to raise. He is going to raise. Well, he induced the bluff. Robert has had no success against Race. Ken all night Race. long. Twelve. Twelve thousand more, eighteen, ten, twelve, five. <laughs> once again, he shows the queen. That's very generous of him. I wouldn't have shown it, Jesse, would you? The blinds are up. Well, I, I, it's almost like he's doing so much bluffing against Robert Cooper that to actually have something, he uh, <laughs> felt obligated. <laughs> Three and six, moving to five and ten. And Ken brought widening the space between himself and the others. Bob Cooper just cannot get it together. 61,000, half as many chips as number two. For Sam Torrance, the first time he ever played on television, he made a flush. Got called on his, tried to raise Liam Flood, called the first string bet, and then uh, Park Parkinson made a full house on the river. Sam Tarns never played again. <laughs> <laughs> He's very keen, a... isn't he, Sam? <laughs> He's a very keen player. He's, he's... <laughs> got, you know, since you started the name dropping, I have played golf with Sam Torrance, and he's just a great guy. Yeah. He was oh. lovely on, on TV. Oh. He, just, he felt a bit aggrieved. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who wouldn't? I couldn't say I blamed him. <laughs> Ten more. Ten more. Twenty total. Dave Gregory raising it up with the ace eight off. Raise. We raise. Wow. Big move. Yeah. This, this certainly is. And uh, 20 more. Dave 20 Gregory more. has already 20 put 20,000 in there, and now he's being asked to put 20,000 more in, which, considering his chip position, is pretty much do or die here. As in, I think re raise 
Or oh, all yeah. in is the move, and he's gone all in. I think Dave Garbutt's picked the wrong time to go over the top. Had he looked at the chip stack, he might have known that it was almost compulsory for Dave Gregory to call, and now he has the worst of it. About 57 more. If he calls. Interestingly enough, Garbutt might have wished he had pushed all in. Gregory would have had trouble calling an all in, but he's got his chips in first. He can't call, Jesse. No, Garbutt can't. I'll actually be happy he can't because the Jack-8 is in <laughs> terrible shape against the Ace-8. Oh. Even his 8 is dominated. It, it was a great move, but Gregory was just up to the challenge there, wasn't it? I mean, Ace-8, not normally the best hand in the world. What has he smelled? He must, he's been paying attention. Uh, Dave Garbutz has been a bit hurt by that. He has about a, just over 100,000 chips, so he's got. I think he's got slightly more than he started with, but uh, that will have hurt him. Fold. Fold. Mm. Call. Just calling on the button there with King 10. Oh. Call. Option. No raise. Three-way pot being played here. And 30,000 in there. Ken Broad delighted to see a flop for free with a four high. It's Garbots with the best hand right now. Can't be feeling too confident about second pair, having just taken a beat, a beating with a re-raise. But he's going to bet it anyway. <coughs> Ten thousand. <coughs> Ken, you've got four high. Ken's just showing him his watch, Jesse. Look at this. <laughs> Wonderful poker. Sometimes you wonder what a guy's thinking about. Fold. He's thinking about folding. <laughs> Fold. yeah, well done, Dave Garbats, because he'd just taken, he had to lay down his, his <coughs> Jack 8 suited there after a terrific re raise from the other day, and, and yet he still bet out into that. Yeah, that, 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 was a, that was a pound of sweat, that, wasn't it? They, they may let you win the pot, but they're going to take a pound of sweat out of you first. Mm. I mean, uh, <laughs> you rewriting Shakespeare here. I think it was a pound of flesh, wasn't it? A pound of sweat. Does that weigh the same amount? I don't know. <laughs> it takes about 45 minutes in the sauna, from what I understand. <laughs> Well, the action has definitely increased with the blinds. Uh, they know that the, the pot is worth stealing now, so we're seeing a lot more raises before the flop and re-raises. Yeah. Fold. Somebody's going to run into a big hand in a minute, Jesse. Uh, I can uh, smell it. Actually, it's Andy Pyra who's been on the sidelines since his 5 10,000 started, but Raise. Dave Garbots has come alive here. <laughs> Raising with a pocket fours. Ten more, twenty total. It's Ken Broad got ten eight suited. Fold. Call. Robert Cooper with the uh, King Ten. It's a decent hand to call with. Well, Bob Cooper only started with 54,000. He's got nearly half his chips in the pot right now. You have to wonder if he can afford to let this go. Well, I think what he'll say after this is, I didn't hit a single flop because he's seen a lot of them by limping, hasn't hit one of them, and to date hasn't shoved his chips in the middle. And from Check. the look of him, Check. he's not going to do it now. He checks. Oh, you All yeah. Fold. Well, that was a shame. I, I was... If Bob Cooper had bet there, he might have taken the pot. There's a, well, yeah, if, 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 <laughs> if, 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 you know, to be honest, I think Dave would have called him. I think he'd have called him because the flop was pretty low, wasn't it? Eight, three, six is not a terrible flop for a pair of fours. And he must assume Robert's calling with high cards. Yeah. There's a. And look at look at Robert Cooper now. His head is almost on his lap. He's in despair. He can't find a hand to put his chips in with. Well, you, you just feel bad for Bob Cooper. I mean, but it's almost like he's let his chips <laughs> eke away without ever putting them in a position to win. 
Well, he only so. has just over 30,000 chips left, so the blinds are going to take him out in two rounds. He has to throw them in. And this good play being rewarded here. Dave Gregory, a little aggression earlier, and now he's rewarded with a big pair of ladies. I'm all in. Robert Cooper's all in. All in. Oh, Ace King. Yeah, they had to go in with Ace King. A classic oh, matchup. <laughs> this is the second time Dave Gregory has been in a position to double up Bob Cooper. <laughs> sort of like that vicious circle of life. But uh, Gregory ahead right now, although it is a coin toss. Nine more. Nine more. You can pass. No, uh, cool. Classic <laughs> poker confrontation. Cool. Two over cards There's against a pair. Chance. Yeah. And this is the second time that Bob Cooper has been all in with Ace King. I'll see you for winning, Rob. Thanks. It's really nice, isn't it? I just, I felt fancy. I wanted to. What's the spread? Come on, fuck me now. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Dave Garbutz will know what the spread is. That's what he does for a living. Sorry, sir. 78,000, and there could put Bob Cooper back in it, and oh. here is the king. Is he going to double up again and then fritter all his chips away? <laughs> well, he's laughing. <laughs> Gregory, can't, Gregory can't believe it. Oh, he's drawing dead, isn't he, Jesse? No, no, Queen no. would still do it. Oh, of course, Two full house over. The yeah, yeah, forgive me. Amateur. <laughs> But the full house for Bob nice. Cooper. And uh, the only player he's had at his win tonight is Dave Gregory, who must start feeling like that Sisyphus movie about the beach ball. <laughs> yeah, it's strange, isn't it? Because Ken Broad has won virtually every hand against Bob Cooper, and Bob Cooper's taking out on Dave Gregory. <laughs> It was another all-in with the big slick for Bob Cooper. He was up against a big pair, but no matter. King on the block, king on the turn, and full house. Taking him back to just about par. Oh, it's uh, hurt Dave Gregory. That's two all-ins. He's gone up against uh, Bob Cooper with lost them both. He's down to about 90,000 chips now, having been our early chip leader. So. He's virtually lost half of his uh, stack from when he was leading earlier on. But yeah, and it just goes to show you all those rubbish hands that Dave Gregory played uh, and he's won those chips with. Is, that's been the ammunition that uh, has been has kept him in this, really. He could write a, a poker book called Reverse Poker. <laughs> Stick him in when you're weak and, and play weak when you're strong. <laughs> Andy Pyra, this is the first hand he's played of this level, I believe. Just a little limp in. And he has allowed Dave Gregory to outflip him. Check. 10,000. Yeah, Dave Gregory is uh, a habit of playing these low, low hands and taking the pot. And I can't see Andy calling that one. Oh! oh. <laughs> How much do I know? <laughs> <laughs> He is a demon, this Andy Pyra. This is the first hand he's played. Could have hit some of that flop. Could have hit some of it. Sorry. He's got his game face on now. Happy, smiling Andy has suddenly gone very sullen and determined. I, I think I think Andy Pyra's missed his calling. He is. This is this is world class. He's going to pick up forty thousand here. Dave Gregory can't call this. All in for 105 more. Oh. Well played, Andy Pyra. That was tremendous. There's me saying he'll put it down. <laughs> he goes well over the top and takes the part. Fantastic poker. My lord. That, that, that's, that's the strongest play we've seen at this table. I, I think I, I, it, was, it was terrifying. Stultifying. <laughs> So there's just not much room for maneuvering right now. It's uh, 
lines are about to go up, and it's going to become just a question of the cards and a strong right arm, I oh. think. And, uh, w when it oh. gets like this and a lot of players left, it virtually becomes a crapshoot as the blinds get higher, doesn't it, Jesse? Well, until oh. we lose the next two players, I, mean, I don't think we're going to be seeing many flops from uh, here on oh. in, mm. possibly until it's three-way. That what you do. And of course, we're about to see one now. <laughs> I seem to be a lo I'm a lovely progress prog prognosis. Prognosis is a good word, eventually. <laughs> I have a big proposis, I think, that's what I wanted to say. No, right. <laughs> oh, it's huge. <laughs> now, what's Robert Cooper going to do? He's missed every flop when he's limped. And he's missed another flop when he's limped. Yeah, this is just a situation. <laughs> Ken Broad on Bob Cooper. And, uh, I mean, uh, the this one time that Bob yeah. Cooper tried to bluff Ken Broad, he was caught. This is deja vu. This is deja vu. This is deja vu. <laughs> okay. Check. He's going Check. for the five. The five would make Bob Cooper a straight, and he is hoping against hope. He's hit a pair. Might be enough. 15,000. But as usual, it's Ken that bets out. When he's missed completely, Bob's hit, and the history tells you that Bob will now pass his cards. Yeah, I mean, in some ways you think it's automatic all in, but Bob just believes. Hold. <sighs> I'm sighing for Bob. <laughs> Oh, no, don't show him. Oh, Ken. Oh, that was cruel. Oh, that, 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 was, that, that was kicking a man when he's down, isn't it? Oh, Bob Cooper now feels like a toddler with no nappy. Oof. That was humiliating and belittling, and I know how Bob feels now. He's, he's pretending it doesn't hurt him, but it hurts him deeply inside. Ken's got his measure. That happened to me at the uh, EPT uh, tournament in Dublin when I folded top pair to a big bluff and the bluff was shown and I couldn't think straight for 15 minutes. I felt ashamed. <laughs> ashamed of my steam coming out of your collar. Well, I just didn't have the chutzpah to do anything about it. I should have re-raised or I should have called, but I was scared. It's a strong move in poker. It's... Uh Oh. <laughs> it's not below the belt, but, it, but it's certainly around that area. <laughs> now, you see, Ken may be wearing pink, but I wouldn't want to meet him down a dark alley. No. And I think, I mean, uh, I think there was some there was some thought behind it. Ken uh, is ready to really shake this table up. And he wants to put the fear of God in them. Cool. Or the fear of Ken, anyway. <laughs> which is probably slightly more intimidating oh, under the circumstances no tonight. Well, Rob, Bob Cooper has just... He's peeling off a flop here with the eight deuce. Pyra in the big blind with a seven nine, and Ken Broad has got the two threes. They've all missed. Although Andy... Andy's hit a pair of nines. And a flush draw. Oh, no. I think there are three clubs out there. All in. Oh, what a big move by Andy. Fold. With Fold. bottom pair. He has shown guts tonight, hasn't he? Some might say foolishness, but yeah. no, it's, it's, a, it's a great line to walk, isn't it? Yeah. He's walked it very well because every time he's made the move, nobody's had anything worth, <laughs> worth calling him with. So the blinds are just about to go up. Let's take a look at how the blinds work in Texas Hold'em. Every poker hand begins with the placing of the button and the posting of the blind. The button is a disc that represents the nominal dealer. The blinds are forced bets to get the action started. The player to the left of the button puts in the small blind. The player on his left puts in the big blind, usually double the small. Action for this first round of betting will move to the left of the big blind. The button moves to the left with each hand are raised throughout the game to keep the action going. <laughs> I might even go in. Oh no. <laughs> Just for you. <laughs> cool. Hello, new tactic, Andy's limping. 
that's that's unorthodox. Pass. Maybe he was worried too many players acting behind him didn't want to commit too many chips, but Pass. it's a weak thing to do. In, in some ways, it oh. looks very strong. That may be what the other player... I mean, Dave Gregory just folded an ace there. And no race. But... Um, but Ken's going to have a look. Yeah, it's it's the kind of thing that needs to be strong, isn't it? Because uh, yeah. he's given these guys a free flop, and now Broad has hit top pair. Oh, he's going to... He's, he's, he's sucking him in. Check. And he's likely check. to bet at this. Check. Check. All checked. Oh. No bet. <laughs> Pyra looking for the ace. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. Ken Broad is going to be very upset that he checked that flop, Jesse. Check. Yeah. Check. There's too much money out there to leave behind. Andy mm -hmm. likes to put those red ones in the middle. Maybe 715 on them. It's going to be tough for Ken Broad to lay this down. 15,000. Yeah, I bet the minimum. I think Ken's going to have to look at this. He may even re raise. This is a really big decision for Ken Broad. If he goes blood to the head here. But if he goes over the top, Jesse, would Andy think his kicker was no good? Maybe he was think he'd be thinking Queen Jack. It's, it's, it's very reasonable, actually. Mm. Queen Jack is the kind of thing you want to see a flop with at, at this stage, isn't it? And Andy didn't raise before the flop, so he's given that kind of hand an opportunity to see a flop. Well, Ken's giving himself every opportunity to get some information from Andy. And he's decided that Andy is not strong. We'll have to see if Andy can stand this raise. Oh, well, he hasn't decided anything yet, has he? He's threatening though, Jesse. I know what you mean. Mm, two little piles there. Looks about 30,000 chips. Ooh, he just smells something a little bit rancid. <coughs> That was a very classy fold. He obviously smelled something there. Maybe it was uh, <coughs> Andy's limp from under the gun there that made him think of a very, very strong hand. Yeah. Two little slices of orange and red. David Gregory, Bob Cooper have their work cut out for them here. with the purples. He'll be very, very pleased. Oh, Bob Cooper is all in on the big blind. This is this is what you don't uh, don't want to have happen to you. Cooper, it's 15,000 for the big blind, but he's gone all in on the blind with his remaining 6,000, saying no matter what, he's calling. And uh, they call that the Calacus, I believe. The Calacus. Yeah. Well, the Calacus has come up against the big slick. <laughs> For 41,000. Pass. Pass. There are sixes. You're good. And it's the two low stacks, but we have a race. <laughs> I tell you what. Dave Gregory must feel like he is due to beat Bob Cooper in a race. This is number three with the cards on their backs. And... Uh, it's not a I'm huge pot, but as far as both of these players are concerned, it's That's everything. Amazing. Yeah, they're both low stacked, and it, they have a history at the table. Yeah, what comes I'll around goes something. around. Or is it what goes around comes I'll around? I'll Can I'll Dave I'll Gregory I'll suck I'll out? I'll tell you what. Oh, and that, it's not a terrible flop for Gregory, because now a nine would win him this pot in addition to the ace or the king. A pair on board, there'd be two counterfeited oh, yeah. pairs for Bob Cooper. He doesn't look happy about it, though, Jesse, No, does it's, he? It's, it's true. He is, he's two to one against. It's an extra three cards that can help him. <coughs> Good luck. That was just in the nicotine. <laughs> and now Bob Cooper, only two cards away from extinction. Well, That's all right. Closer towards the door, and Bob well Cooper uh, See you later. just never got going for him. What is it? A race.
race, Bob Cooper's third race of the day. Put the chips all in, and this one came out on the wrong end of the stick. Aces and eights, the dead man's hand. Any face card here. Mm. And he's got one. They've got to go in, Dave. Raised all in. <coughs> oh, dear me. 32,000 total. Well. What's it more 17 for me? to call. <coughs> oh, cool. This is, call. this is no fun. This will be no fun That's for David Gregory at all. He's all in. And little did he know that he would be living and dying mm. on a deuce. <laughs> but that is the key card here. He would rather have seen Ace Queen turned over Jesse yeah. than his king to be dominated like this. But we've seen stranger things, haven't we? And there's, that's like rubbing salt in the wounds here. <laughs> Although, it's actually given Gregory a few outs. A five now would be a split pot. That was a bad card. The seven's playing now. Four or five for a split. Deuce for the win. They're the narrowest of margins. Dave Gregory out in fourth. Well, that's the tail of poker. Not down yet. First of these guys to get to 300,000 is going to have a strong advantage because it'll be like that free shot. And that's the scramble Freeze. right now. Raise. Go on, stick it in. Raise 50 Total of 70,000. And Pyrus counting down. Ooh. Fold. Well, this must be tempting for Andy Pyra. He's trying. Call. He's called. He may be playing stop and go. If the ace doesn't come, he may just push in. Well, it's a low flop and it's no good to either of them. And he is pushing them all in. Surely Dave can't call this. He's got no draw. He's got no nothing. <laughs> this is a great play. This is a great play. I love the speed with which he did it as well. Is there any way Carbots could work out he's ahead? It seems impossible. It, it, it's something that Greg Raymer talked about as the new, and Chris Ferguson as well, as the new style of Hold'em. You're mentally committed to put all your chips in the pot. If an ace doesn't come, if you suspect that the Razor might have an ace, and uh, it might be what Andy was thinking about. <laughs> Andy might have been in big trouble if a king came in oh, that occasion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he certainly <laughs> would have been. But again, Andy Pyra shows that of the three remaining players at the table, he's the one who's willing to put his chips in the middle, all of his chips in the middle regularly. And the other two must be sitting there thinking, this man has courage. I mean, that pot, a huge swing for Andy Pyra. He just picked up 70,000 from his opponent with the worst hand and without having to turn his cards over. Um, if he had re-raised before oh. the flop, he would have found himself uh, having to C5. Andy's called here. A6 off suit, no raise. Well, that's a hand you want to see a flop with, isn't it, Jesse? Jack, 10 off suit. Sure is. Pyra just played this exact same situation with a jack six. He's really mixing it up. And I can't remember the number of times both players have missed the flop. It's happened again. Yeah. Garbots must be stunned. 
All he did was make a raise with King-10. He's found his chips disintegrated away. That's not the strongest bet in the world. Rice. Uh, oh, oh, there is a steamroller on this table named Andy Pyra. But is Dave Pock committed? Is he going to have to call anyway? How, how many chips has he got left? Piranha is loose. No, I think Dave will lay this down. Wait, he, it's a huge pot. He's got nothing. Kill me off, oh. Garbots has played some brilliant poker tonight. The last two hands. Oh, he, he's just been flat out outplayed, Norman. I mean, there's nothing else, but he's been outplayed here. guys. In Vegas, actually, if you die while you're in a hand, you're considered all in. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a rule that had, had to be dealt with. But. Only in America. <laughs> what if you win? Does it go? Does it go to your nearest and dearest? Fold. Go on site. Ken will be willing to go on with that for sure. Figures to be the best hand. I'll just hope he hasn't gotten unlucky. Ooh, maybe he has. Cool. Without hesitation, Pyra calls, so we have the situation. Don't know what Andy's thinking here. If he misses, will he still be committed? <laughs> well, last time he shoved them all in when he missed the flop. Ken has to go all in. I'm all in. All in. He cannot leave them behind. Does Andy believe him? How much is it for Andy to call? That's what he needs to know. He's already got quite a lot of chips in the pot. He may feel he has to call. 108. 108. This is a big decision. It all seems so easy when you can see the cards. I know, that's why we're sitting here and they're <laughs> sitting there, Jesse. Whoa. I think I'm seriously the best poker player that ever walked this earth. Me, well. you, now. <laughs> Ken has consistently shown the bluff all night long, and yet the players still, still fold to him. Uh, <laughs> Well, Andy Pyra's there. He's still chip leader, apart, uh, even though he lost that pot. But Ken Broad now is handily placed. And Dave Garbrandt, he's got to do something soon. I've <coughs> noticed Andy Pyra, he's, <coughs> he's pointing out a question to the players right when it's their turn, when the action's on them. There's something that uh, a lot of players, Tony G, Daniel Negrano, they all do that. When, uh, when someone speaks to you right when the action's on you, it... Uh, it's very hard to answer in such a way that it doesn't uh, give some indication of your hand. Yeah, and I think that's especially true in Britain, Jesse, because we're quite polite and we like to answer people <laughs> when they talk to us. I mean, mind your own business doesn't work as a reply, does it? <laughs> Raise. 30 more. Oh, 50 Andy may have run into trouble here. Yeah. Is Dave going to chuck them all in? I think he's been waiting for this. Yeah, all in. All in. It's the only way. And Ken Broad reacting like he's got a decision. Yeah, he, he might have had that idea in mind himself. But uh, he'll take the hint now that he's behind, I would imagine. I don't think Ken will want to get involved in this. They may have looked pretty when he first looked at them. They don't look so pretty now. Andy's got an interesting decision. He certainly does. 93 more. How much is that to me, please? <laughs> Way <laughs> too much. I mean, if the percentage is uh, between these three, 
It looked at broad, obviously not in terrible shape, but uh, if he calls this Jesse, his hand may not just tingle, it could fall off. <laughs> so 143 to me. He may feel like if he re-raises, he can get Andy off the hand and only be playing Dave Garbats for half his stack. But um, he's ten taken the sensible route there. Now Andy's decision is huge here. He must suspect that his kick is no good. Well, Andy's put in, I think, about 50,000, and Dave Garbats has only raised something like 60 or 70 more. Mathematically, a pirate could probably call with a lot of hands, but stack-wise, he's fine if he folds. That's 50. That's about 80. And he's got about, well, he's got about 140, I think. Once again, Andy's play today has been to make the big re-raise himself. And I think he's going to be shy of calling a big re-raise here. Yeah, he can get back in this with 140,000. Mm. But if he calls, he'll be playing for everything, okay. won't he? Cool. He's called. He's, has called. He doesn't want to see an ace, and that's what he is going to see. Yeah, yeah. He felt like he couldn't leave him behind. But uh, this is curtains time for Pyra, unless the deuce... The ugly duckling hits the board. That's that voice. You'll get it. You'll get it. Deuce. I, thi <laughs> I think Handy will still have chips oh, left. Yeah. Even if he loses <laughs> this hand. I think he'll still be in, but he will be very weak. Oh! <laughs> oh, dear. That was a rude awakening. Although a yeah, jack yeah. right yeah. now, interestingly enough, would make it a split pot. And running hearts would give Handy the flush. Oh, That's oh. cruel, but it's given him a few more outs. A deuce to win, a jack to tie. Not enough. And uh, they'll do a countdown now to see what Pyra's scatterings are left with. I think it's less than 100,000. That was a really tough decision for Andy to make. He was kind of pot committed. He thought his ace was good. And he he called he called the wrong hand, Jesse. Too much, not always enough. And Andy Pyra back to square one here. Garbats all of a sudden looking strong indeed. Yeah, and he's down to 66,000 chips with the blinds at 10 and 20. He's got very little time to act. Oh. But he hasn't been slow to act, has he, Jesse? He'll probably stick them in sooner rather than later. 66,000 and 20,000 of that is out you. in the big blind. Cool. And Andy Pyre right. might just have to go all into my... Okay, like he's I taken the you. flop. <laughs> he's taken the flop. Had he put his chips in, I think Ken would have folded. You're asking how... It can shake your confidence <laughs> to deal he with it. Do you think he was right to see a flop there, Jesse? <laughs> <laughs> Pyra's only concern now is how to get the rest of Ken's chips in. I think I think he's going to struggle to do that. If he bets, Ken will fold, I think. The minimum bet right now is 20,000. Uh, he's checked. He's checked quickly. And I think Andy Pyra might be content to wait until the river to put any chips in. <laughs> the big side. A seven. A seven would be the card. And he has finally hit pay dirt here. Twenty thousand. Well played, Andy Pyra. Good acting too. Uh, <laughs> As a semi-pro myself. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> how long? How long should he wait for? Oh well. Oh, oh, oh. reluctantly. <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't work. Is He's he going to show? He has to. No. No. <laughs>
until Delilah came home, Ken Broad finally put a bluff in at the end with no pair. Uh, the Full House won without a showdown. 15 and 30,000 on the blinds now, Norman. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about that last hand. When you flop a full house like that, how are you going to get paid? I think Andy did very Pass. well to wait to the river and at least extract a little money. But uh, the blind's at a stage now where, as they say, looking at your cards may be a Pass. disadvantage. <laughs> you can only take your courage away. And uh, I wonder if Pirate could have found a raise there. But... Uh, It pretty much is where, it, it, rather than hoping, uh, I think, for you to pick up a big hand, you just have to kind of hope your other pl the other players don't pick up anything at all. Yeah, totally. And Andy's down to about 90,000 chips now, so the blinds are going to take him out in two rounds. He's got to get him in, but he's never been shy of that in this game. No, I, I'd, I'd venture to say he's going to push in here no matter what he's got. Mm. He's on the button. But <laughs> if you push him in and get caught, oh, he'll be delighted. <laughs> He's good. <laughs> oh, you're forcing me to co to put my chips in. He's, he's actually got such a big hand that he's cool. he's decided Pass. just to call. And um, Pass. I'm all in. It's Race. a bit dangerous, all but in. it's gotten the right reaction. Ken Broad actually in trouble here. The best hand, really. That Pyra. Oh, or one of the best hands he could be up against. The jack is uh, dead. It's blocked. Just one over card now. 70-30. And uh, Pyra just has to block the ace from the board to double through. If the bullet comes, it'll be the last one he sees. Two cards to come, and this is what gets your heart going. I think that... <laughs> <laughs> Three cards in the deck. That's not even close. Anything but an ace for the Piranha. Broad looking to seal the deal here. He even took his glasses off, oh, yeah. Jesse. Yeah, yeah. It must be serious. <laughs> Andy doubles through, he's back in it. He was really willing to gamble with those jacks. I mean, uh, just calling on the button there. But uh, that's the way you win. He who dares, I guess. Pyra, it's funny, he's a short stack here, Norman, but he seems to be dictating the pace of the table. He's done that throughout. Actually, he's done that since round three when the blinds went up. He suddenly decided to change gear, and no matter how many chips he's lost in the top, he's kept his aggressive play going. And good luck to him. Andy Pyra reacting to the stamina nature of this game. You have to keep your concentration going. And, uh, you know, it looked like Pyra was out when he lost with that ace-deuce of hearts yay long ago. But uh, he's pulled himself back into this. 15 and 30,000 are the blinds. Ace-jack on the button. And uh, it's a string bet. It is a string bet. You announced raise, and you just, like, gave the opening. He's going to be held to that. It was going to be a minimum raise, so we have to make yeah. it up, yeah. So I don't think it might yeah. no, 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 actually. Second, <laughs> if, if, it, if it's a move, it's a very clever play. He's not. He's not backing we down. All in. Oh, they've oh. got the same hand. <laughs> you know, something about this whole tournament tells me this was going to happen. When the chips did go in in this situation, they'd have identical <laughs> hands. <laughs> Nobody wants to go home, Jesse, apart from you and me. <laughs> well, it would be most unfortunate or if uh, one of these players lost this pot. But if fo Oh! There's a free roll for Pyra now. Well, this is no fun. That's unbelievable. 
Same hand, but uh, four spades for Andy. If it comes spade on the Turner River, it'll be a cruel way to lose a pot for Garbatz. Andy looks ashamed. <laughs> he should be. Embarrassed. <laughs> Two cards to come. Wow. Oh. That is unbelievable. Oh, he's, his mind is completely swimming yeah, he, now. He, he thinks he's out. He's, he's out. shaking he's hands. He's... You're still there, Dave. You're still there. Sit okay. down. One, five, two. It's a really, really... I mean, you talk about bad beats in poker, but that's... Um, well, you don't want to be walking uh, under any ladders on your way home, for sure. <laughs> If anything's going to put you on tilt, that is, mind you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't oh. think Dave's got enough chips for tilt uh, to matter Look now. at Dave Garbaz. He can't believe it. Same hand. The only thing that can ship a pot one way is four of a suit on board. They were all represented, and spades have come to the fore to give Andy Pyra a flush. And doesn't he look flush with success? You know what? <laughs> You'd rather be lucky than good in this game. <laughs> <laughs> any day, any day. He deserves his position just for the way he played earlier. He's made one bad call all night, for which he was severely punished, but uh, he's back. This one ain't over yet. True. But, uh, I mean, time's really well. All in Time was ball. running out for Ken Broad, and he's been trapped here. He thought he had to he move. He probably beautiful. did, but he's, he's run into something. Are the cards live? Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Horrible Sorry, situation. Yeah. He needs a miracle. But we saw a miracle five hands ago. This would really be a miracle. <laughs> this <laughs> poor Ken Broad. I mean, uh, against two over cards, he wouldn't be in terrible shape. But what he's against here, the big pocket pair, is, uh, I don't know, I, he, might, he must be eight to one against. Might be more. Yeah, Andy just said ace, three, four. He wouldn't want to see any two of those on the flop, and he doesn't. He needs runner runner to win it. it it's got to be two cards that play, that's for sure. There's some straights out there. Five wouldn't hurt. It's given him a lifeline. Better than he was. And he ate in the deck, and Ken Broad's still in it. Well done. Fairly enjoyed it. No. Well done. Best okay, luck, Kenny. Cheers. Best luck, boys. Yeah, I think I need more than luck. Thank you. He's played a great game tonight, Ken Broad. No problem. That last hand ran into a railroad car. The cards were not live. The seven on the turn gave Ken a faint whiff of hope, but the jacks in the end beaten the ace high. Those little stacks, all that separate Dave Garbots from extinction. And he's still thinking about those spades, Norman Pace. Is it over? Is it over? Well, if Dave Garbutt doubles through, they'll be just about equal in chips, so it's not over, Jesse. But I've got a feeling by the smirk on Andy Pyra's face that he's going to be calling all in. He's going to take the risk. It's the way he's played tonight. Okay. <laughs> Looking at these head-to-head -head statistics, Andy Pyra over 3-1. to one. Advantage. The other statistics remarkably similar. Although uh, Pyra does seem to have had the measure of Garbots in many of the heads up pots they've played. In fact, uh, Pyra's won plenty with no hand at all. And it might not take, for, oh, it might be all over right now. It could be. Raise. Raise. We're going to see what Dave has. He may shove them all in. The blinds are too high for him to hang about. If he's got anything, he may do it. He may do it with that. Dave basically has 25% of his stack in on the big blind. And heads up, any picture card is a big hand. Yes, he's all in. He's going to get called. Yeah. All in and called. Andy Pyra has played some great poker to get here, but recently he's got a bit of the green as well. And now in a very dominating position to finish this off. Didn't last long there, heads up. <laughs> <laughs> it's not over. 
Carbot's all in and needing a three here. Jack plays. Queen. Would, a queen would make, well, a queen wouldn't end it, but it would make it very thin indeed. Carbot's really in need of a crab here. Now, really anything but a three. And Pyra has done it. Okay. He did it his way, Norman. He no did. He, <coughs> Jesse came back from the dead. He was down to 66,000 chips. But he had a run of cards and a run of luck that you need to win a tournament. And in spite of his luck, I have to say, Andy Pyra deserves this. He played the strongest at the table. His re-raises with nothing were fantastic. We have a worthy winner. Yeah, good players make their own luck. And uh, Pyra, from start to finish, looking at that last hand. And Pyra has done it, but on the back foot from the get-go. Needed a three at any time. It never came. The ace high, ace king jack beating ace king ten. Well, that was some great poker. Andy Pyra, congratulations. Where did it come from? Some of those bluffs you made. Scandalous, absolutely scandalous. <laughs> the cards that I was getting, I was getting when, I, when I went short stacked after that ace deuce. It was ridiculous. And... Uh, you know, I'm quite pleased with how I pulled it around, but um, I got the cards and that's, that's that, really. Dave, I have to ask you, when you lost that big hand when you both had ace-jack and uh, Pyra fluked the flush, yeah. you looked devastated. Did you think it was over then? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it was over. I mean, it was, uh, what was it, 180, probably 200,000 I lost. I maybe only had, you know, I was in good position before that. Um, Left with 60, 70 after that, so uh, you know you can't really come back from that unless you hit a few miracle cards like Andy did. Anyway, I mean, if, it, <laughs> if, the, if the cards even after that hand, if I was sort of got the stuff he was getting, then uh, I probably might have got draw, um, clawed my way back. But uh, it wasn't to be. Never mind. He played very well. I mean, if well, that's it then. Andy Pyra, a young rising star in the poker world, going to the semi-final. Big bluffs and bad beats, that's poker. So from here at the PartyPoker.net European Open, join us next week when double World Series of Poker bracelet winner Scotty Fish Tank Fishman will be on tap. See you then.